Now we're going to add a cartoon outline to this robot using the vertex normals. And to do that, first we need to duplicate the whole model. Just hit Control D. And now we have two of these, as you can see here. And we need to delete the particles in it. So let's just expand this. And then just delete these four particle emitters. And now we need to create a new material that's going to go over all these objects. So we can just add asset, material, and the shader type is going to be a shader asset. And we're going to create a new asset here. And I'll rename this material to matte outline. And you can see when it's a shader asset, there's only one input here and it's color. And then we have kind of the render options here. So it doesn't really have any parameters because it all happens in the patch editor. So if we select this patch asset and go inside of it by clicking patches, you can see it comes with a little bit of extra patches kind of by default. And we actually don't want to use almost all of these pre-made patches. So we'll just delete all those. And this input here, I believe if we go to properties, this input is color. So we'll rename that to color. And then we'll add one more input. And this will be position. And this will be a vector four. And that made this little purple node over here. So we'll attach position to position and color to color. So now this patch asset isn't really doing anything, but it gives us the option to basically move the position of where these vertices or polygons are rendered. So we'll go back out of this patch asset. And we have to do a few things. So in this matte outline, we'll take this position and pop it in here. And it made it way over there. So I'll just move it back down here. And this part involves a lot of kind of confusing patches and some confusing logic. So I've kind of already built it down here, but I'll rebuild it up here and just kind of explain what each, each thing is doing as far as I understand. So we have this vertex attribute. And this grabs the local normal of each vertice. So the normal is the information that tells it which direction the shader should be rendered. So if there's a polygon right here, it's facing pretty much directly towards us. And these polygons up here are facing up. And so now we're going to swizzle this. So it converts it into a kind of different style of value. And we're just going to use x, y, z, and 0 for the alpha. And now we'll multiply this. And the value needs to be super tiny, so it'll be 0 0.0005 in this case. And then we need to grab another vertex attribute. And this time it's the local position. So the local normal tells it the direction that each vertice is facing. And this tells it the position that each vertice is at. So we'll add these two values together. And then we need a vertex transform. And this is essentially telling the vertices kind of what to do or where to go. And we'll multiply that by all these values that we've calculated. And we'll put this output into the position of this. And nothing happened because this material is not applied to anything. So we'll take this new robot, and I believe we have to manually select each of these and change it. So let's we'll just take a second. As I started adding these materials, I noticed that this vertex transform needed to be swapped with this add. So I'm just going to put that there and this here.
All right, now you can see I've applied all these materials and something is happening. It's obviously not correct yet, but we have some stuff going on. We have these kind of flat polygons pushed out along their normal direction. And so we're kind of duplicating this geometry without having to import a separate model. We're still using the space model. We're just kind of pushing these polygons at render time. So it's going way too far. So I'm going to change this. I changed it to 0 0.005 as I was putting it together, but I'm going to add one more zero. Just so it kind of shrinks things down. And now in this matte outline material, I'm going to switch the render type to coal mode front. And now you can see what's going on. So we're only rendering kind of the back facing polygons. So in the front, you're not seeing it rendered at all. But as it wraps around all these polygons, it'll render the back side, not the front side. So if we go back to back, you can see on these edges, it's transparent. But if we go to front, it appears like there's little outlines around everything. And we can change this color to black. If we want a black outline. And that's essentially it. If you zoom in, you can see a little bit more what's going on. And there's some issues that I will explain as we get to it. So you can see here, the polygons are being pushed out, but there's little gaps between them. And that's because some of these edges or these faces are flat shaded. Oh, I need to pause this. So see this polygon here and this polygon here, this edge is totally sharp. And so when these get pushed out, they get pushed straight out. And so there's separation between all these faces. And you can see it up here even more clear. Each of these faces is just pushed straight out and they're separated. So you can see this one, it's kind of perfect all the way around because this is smooth shaded. You see where this has these sharp lines, this is smooth. So as these vertices are pushed out, they're also enlarged and so there's no gaps between them. And the same goes for this face here. Like this whole area is smooth. So if we look back here, this is really smooth. You don't see any gaps as we rotate around. But then when you go to something sharp, like these corners, there's little gaps. So it's just something to keep in mind. If you do want to do this properly, you would probably have to export another model with all of the Fong shading set to smooth. So all these edges would be smooth, but then this outline would also be totally complete and not fragmented like this. But when you zoom out, you don't really notice all these little gaps because they're so tiny compared to the whole model. If you look in the viewport here, you probably wouldn't even notice it unless you were looking for it. And so now it just has a little bit of a cartoon or an outlined look. And if we want to increase this, we can just change this multiply number to something larger. But then obviously you see the issues a lot more. So you'd have to be a little delicate with these values. You could do 0 0.0006, 8 even. Or you could go really small and just have it be super subtle. So it's just a very fine line on the outside. And the smaller you go, the less you'll notice these little issues. I think 0 0.0005 looks pretty good. And that's it. It's a very confusing set of patches, but as long as you just kind of copy all this and make sure your patch asset is set up with these outputs over here, these inputs and outputs, then you should be golden.